Welcome back to Programming Like It's 1979. We're continuing our march through the NAND game. As promised, I'm skipping the super boring opcodes chapter, and we're going to go straight into conditions. So in conditions here, we have three flags. We have less than zero, equal to zero, and greater than zero. And they're gonna, we're going to issue a one or a zero based on what these flags say about this number x. And these flags can be combined. Uh, this is an or, a logical or. If all three flags are set, then we are always going to uh, output one because the number will be less than, equal to, or greater than zero. So what can we do here? Well, what are we gonna need? We're going to need a few things here. I think largely at the bottom, we're going to need an AND because we want to AND certain conditions. So let's start with the easy one, is 0, right? If x is equal to 0, if the x is equal to 0 flag, if the equal flag is set, and x is actually 0, then this should be issuing one. It looks like it is. And changing it to non-zero made it issue zero. So that's great. All right, so that one's pretty easy. And we also have, oh, I just hate um, how there's no good way to, to lay this stuff out. I'm just gonna try and fake this. We also have a less than flag. Can I split? So the way that I would actually figure out whether x is negative is by doing a split and looking at the very first bit. And if the first bit is high, then we know that x is negative. We actually built that as part of our ALU. For the less than flag, we should be able to do something very similar. So if the less than flag is set, and we use this convenient is negative function. Wire that up. This is negative. This is issuing zero because the less than flag is not set. If I set it, this gives us a one. Let's make this positive. And now we're getting a zero again. Great. Let's put this right there. So it's kind of lined up. Greater than. Now we don't have an is greater than predicate. So what can we do? Well, we already have this is negative and is zero. So something is greater than zero if both of these are false. Correct? The question is, do I have to negate these first, or can I negate? This is De Morgan's law, isn't it? Let's do it with an or. So if either, if the number is negative or is zero, then it is not positive. Therefore, if we negate this or gate, Right, let's just set it to zero. Well, that's uh, right, because if it's zero, then it is not greater than zero. That's true, and let's make it negative. It is continuing to be not greater than zero. And let's make it one, and it is. Great, so that's correct. And then we are going to do the same thing we did before by putting a happy little AND gate right here. And once again, that will go to our condition. This will go to our logic. Okay. So now we want to be able to combine these. And I believe a three-way OR would do it. We don't actually have a three-way OR, but I think we can fake it by just doing this. I believe this will work. All 
right? Let's set all three of those. There should be no number I can put in here that will make that top OR gate equal to zero. I think that's right. Let's give it a go. Yes! Eight components used, and according to the game, this is the fewest possible components. I like it when a plan comes together. So what's next? So now our task is to make what they are choosing to call combined memory, which is to take two registers, which are labeled the A and the D register for this CPU, and the main memory, and be able to dispatch a write to one or more of those registers. So I promised in a previous episode to talk about my NAND to Tetris design. And I did manage to find it here. Let me get that window sized correctly. Took me a little while to figure out how to get Logisim Evolution running under my new Mac OS. Um, I make heavy use of tunnels here on the layouts just to sort of be able to um, divide up the CPU into manageable chunks. So for example, this jump logic section is the section we literally just did in NAND game previously. But now we're working on this logic here where there are going to be flags that are going to indicate which of these registers or the main memory we're going to be writing to. So let's think about this. Let's get rid of our instructional text. Our spec is over here. It says there are three flags, A, D, and star A. I believe NAND to Tetris calls that the M flag. If A is set, we're writing to the A register. If D is set, we're writing to the D register. If star A is set, we're writing to RAM at the address given by the A register. So this is actually a dereference, or what you would call in assembly language an indirect address. We're going to fetch the address from the A register and then write to that address. You can combine them. There are clock signals because we're dealing with memory. And then here's our output. And our output is just going to be the current value of these registers or of the memory. So right off the bat, we know we're going to need two registers. Let's say the leftmost one is our A. Can I rename these? Signs point to no. I thought I was able to rename these, but I can't. And we're going to need some RAM for our memory. We know, let's do the trivial stuff first. We know that all the clocks are going to be hooked up to the clocks. Let's go ahead and do that. Eep. All right. So we've got inputs, which are the X values. And then those inputs only get stored, if I recall correctly, if that ST flag is high. And if the ST flag is low, nothing happens. And if it's not hooked up at all, set out to in, that's a side effect. Yeah. Oh, I see. So, right, it's going to, on clock cycle one, it will always cycle the out value back into the in value to refresh it. So my first guess, and this is just a guess, maybe it will prove to be wrong, is that we can go ahead and wire up the X values full time because we're going to be using that uh, store value to decide whether or not whether or not we're writing to it. All right, so these two are flags, and it feels to me, again, like that should be fairly straightforward. So if the A flag is set, then we're gonna set the store bit on the A register to high, same for the D flag. The tricky bit is going to be the store flag for our RAM module here. Well, let's come back to it. Yes, I know I keep constantly moving these things around. I apologize. I'm fiddling. I'm a fiddly person. 
I think that this is going to be true also all the time as well. Whatever's in the register is what we're sending out because it's the current value. And again, this is a bit tricky because it's the current value in RAM at the address given by the A register. So the question is, what is being, the, the two bits that we need to figure out here are, when does the store bit for RAM go high? And what is the address? Well, we know here that we're only going to write when the star A flag is set. So I think that is actually simple as well. Make that appear. So really, we're just left with this one dangling wire. Is it really as simple as wiring that up to there? Does that do it? Well, let's try it. Suppose the A register set, uh, let's say we want to get whatever value is in the A register. Can I set this RAM? Oh good, I can't, that's wonderful. That's not going to help us at all. Can I set this? I can't set any of these things. Okay, well, I have to cycle through the clock. So let's say I set the value 3, hex 3, into the A register. Good, that has happened. Then I want to write that value 3 also into there. Let's cycle the clock again. Now it's appeared in there. And let's say I want to read from the A register. We just have to look at the output. That is right. So the one thing that worries me here is that when I did this and cycled the clock flag, let's set it to something else. Well, that's not going to work. We'll have to set it to one, we'll say. When I had both of these flags set, it looked to me like it took two cycles for that value to propagate over. Although maybe that's correct because let's set them to all of them and let's cycle the clock. What I expect to happen here is 11 will stay there or 3 will stay there and then 1 will be written to the 1. It'll take two cycles for the 1. Okay, 3 will go into the 1 register. No, it didn't happen that way. Yeah, I don't know if the problem is that I'm misunderstanding it and this is correct or if I'm not understanding it. So at this point, I'm going to see, did I do it right? And hopefully get some insight if I didn't on what I did wrong. All right, so, so apparently this is correct. And this is a very common failure mode when thinking about storage at the electronics level. Uh, because there is this timing element, it gets very confusing very quickly. And I'm not all ashamed to say I always have to sort of sit there and single step through it to make sure that the circuits are settling the way they should. So we are a little closer to our NAND-based CPU from nandgame.com. This has been Programming Like It's 1979. Thanks for watching. <laughs>